what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? I came across a weight loss video in a YouTube ad, and the guy who was doing the pitch was a heart surgeon. The thing that caught my attention was he kept reiterating that it's not your fault. He was saying that bloated stomach, the uncontrollable urges to eat, the lack of willpower to exercise, being groggy, et cetera, et cetera. It's not your fault. He even went as far as telling people to say to themselves, I'm not to blame. Well, I'm here to tell you, family, that if there are adverse situations in your life that you help to create, it's your fault. See, this society that we live in today is a blameless society. It's a society that says, don't judge when all of us judge every day. Every single one of us judge. And we do what we do oftentimes because we know we're going to be judged. Invariably, when doctors, motivational speakers, bloggers, advice columnists, authors tell you it's not your fault, that's their hustle to get you to buy what they're selling. Oftentimes, people who have had a difficult childhood, perhaps they grew up poor, abused, neglected, unloved, or all of the above, will blame their upbringing on their current behavior. And perhaps their upbringing does have a lot to do with their current behavior. But I just realized that if you really want to have a productive life, if you want to have a healthy life and enter into healthy relationships, you have to learn to compartmentalize that pain because at the end of the day, you're going to be responsible for your own actions. And if you put that needle in your arm, if you cut yourself, if you decide that you're going to try to drink your pain away, drink away your problems, if you decide you're going to go and rob a bank or sell some drugs or do anything, type of illegal stuff, or you're going to do something to pimp your body, then ultimately the consequences are going to be yours. At the end of the day, nobody cares. So you have to care about yourself. That's what I learned. I learned to love myself. Once I learned to love myself, I stopped doing things that was harmful to me. You know, I often say that whatever your objective is in life, if you have a goal, your actions have to be consistent with what you want the outcome to be. Accepting responsibility for my own actions, I do believe is one of my greatest attributes. It was one of the best decisions that I ever made early on in life. And I made mistakes after I came to that revelation. But what happened was that once I held myself accountable for my own actions, I could no longer blame anyone else. And that meant that I didn't have to wait around for other people to correct things so that my life could go accordingly the way I wanted it to go. When people accept that they're not to blame for their circumstances, for their situation, it allows them to escape responsibility. 
Imagine going out there and shopping every day. Let's say you make, I don't know, let's say you make $2,000 a week. And let's say, well, let's round it off. Let's just say you make $10,000 a month and your bills come out to $5,000 a month. All your bills come out to $5,000 a month. You have an extra $5,000 that you could use for savings. But let's just say you peeled off another thousand for incidentals. Now you got $4,000. But you take that $4,000 and you blow it at the mall and other things, on other things, every single month. And you have no savings. And Somebody tell you, well, it's not your fault. Let's say you have a horrible credit score because you haven't paid your bills on time. Uh, that's your fault. You understand what I'm saying? We have to take inventory of our lives and take responsibility for our actions. One could argue that, well, when you're a kid, you know, you can blame a lot of things on your parents because oftentimes kids don't really know their way. They're not really mature enough to make certain types of decisions. One thing that I learned early on, I saw guys who came from where I came from who were being murdered who were being sentenced to a gang of years in jail. And I realized early on that nobody cared. I saw people being abused in my community and nobody did anything about it. Maybe people dropped their head and looked sad or whatever, but I think that so many other people had their own issues that they didn't have any energy to care about anybody else's. Not that they were absent of compassion. I think oftentimes that when people are being attacked themselves and they're going through things themselves, it's hard for them to concentrate on what others are going through. You dig what I'm saying? People who enter bad relationships all the time, you will have authors bloggers, advice columnists, even some of their friends who would tell them, it's not your fault. If you keep getting into the same type of relationships with the same type of individuals, perhaps it's not them, it's you. It's your fault. Now, saying that it's your fault does not mean that you're a bad person. It just means that you have to take inventory of your life and think about the choices that you're making and just make wiser choices. I won't drag this out, but I'll leave you with this. It's said that people will change when the pain of the same becomes greater than the pain of the change. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?